uh, this business of motivation group. If you have a better talk over my eyes here in Oakmere because they all glasses on the reading don't help. But if you wouldn't mind uh, putting your phones on silent or switching them off a little bit. We're a great speaker here today. So uh, we'll start off. Good morning uh, and welcome to the Business Motivation Group. My name is Ray and I'm one of the founding members of this new organisation. The Business Motivation Group creates space for business people to share and connect through motivation, support, personal development and the next step meetings. We create an environment that gives access to information and inspiration that business people need to set and accomplish their goals. This is done with two monthly meetings. The first is a motivational talk with keynote speakers. To date we've had four guest speakers who have covered topics as diverse as innovation and business, which was Ivan McPhillips from the GMIT, uh, Trading Shares, which was Mona Mali from TICN, and how to set up a free newspaper, which was uh, Ronnie McGovern from the Galway Advertiser. Interestingly, each of the speakers has also told us about their lives and life achievements and give us nuggets of information and inspiration based on their experience, which we can all translate into our own business and lives and hopefully make them better and more successful as a result. The next is the second, uh, is the next step meeting. This is a focus group that facilitates, supports and it's incentive for each member through brainstorming and solution focused meetings with other members. This is a great platform to run your next big ideas. It is also an ideal place to seek solutions to issues that you may be having with your own business. Today we're having a next first step, next step session as a taster of what the session will be like. I'm delighted to welcome Ali Walsh of Micromarketing, Marketing, who is both founder member of Business Most Motivation uh, Group and host of today's session. Ali's topic for today is targeting your market. Uh, over to you, Ali. Thanks, Ray. Good morning, everyone. As Ray says, Ali Watch is my name. A uh, bit about myself, first of all, I'm founder of Micro Marketing, which is a, a, a marketing consultancy for startups and SMEs. Uh, I founded that in 1998 and uh, I've been running it since. Uh, we've worked with a range of companies uh, nationally, internationally. Um, but all startups and the SME sector, there was no common sector in terms of <coughs> what industry they were in. Um, last year, I was appointed DMD of Meteorologics, which is a new um, energy management company. Uh, we just had our, uh, we've been developing a new product <coughs> and software over the last uh, 18 months. I was initially recruited to do the marketing for them, but I got, a, got the upper DMD position last year. So we're launching that later this month. Uh, we just started making sales. Literally this month started making sales, so you'll be hearing more about that soon. And invention services, I'm the joint management director of that. Um, that is a business that I established with my father, who's an engineer. Um, he has developed a few products, a few patents, a few ideas, and um, we've got a few of them to market over the last couple of years. And we had planned to do this sometime in the future that we set up a service to attract ideas and try to develop them. <coughs> but uh, the ideas started coming to us before we were really ready for them, but we started the business now. So um, in the last month, I, uh, we've had been over in China meeting with companies. We've had one product which will be going on the shelves in Home Depot the first of June this year, and we'll be going into BQ <coughs> in the UK next year. Um, we brought them three new product ideas last month, all of which they liked. So um, we've been appointed their European partners. So we'll have a nice little PR spin coming into that soon. Uh, two man Bowie company partners with $1.5 billion turnover, Chinese conglomerate. Um, so, the link between those three businesses for me is marketing and strategy, which is basically what I do. So, regardless of the, of the industry, I provide the, the kind of marketing and strategic planning for it. Uh, so, my marketing specifically is a full service marketing design consultancy, uh, as I said. Um, locally, nationally, and internationally, the, the bulk of it will be locally in the Western Ireland. We have a couple of national customers, and customers in the UK and in the States as well. So, uh, what we do, uh, for example, uh, we, we do the marketing for Clonic Kitty Black Pudding, but only in the UK, so we do some international work for Irish companies. So, how do you effectively target your markets? Um, most people come to me and they start off with, they want, at this stage, it's a Facebook page. A couple of years ago, it was a full page in the advertiser, now they just want Facebook. Uh, but that's kind of going to the end of the story. You need to start off at the beginning. So, to effectively target your market, you know, you first need to know what the market is. Um, what I find is that people 
traditionally don't put a whole lot of thought into their marketing, uh, especially small businesses. It is, uh, I had an example of a customer last year, and the marketing budget was 3,472 euros. So where did you get this number? So the total we had was 25,000, and this is what was left after everything else was done. And what can we get for this, as opposed to you know, looking at it from the other direction, who are we targeting? How big is the market? Where are they? And how do we get them? And then deciding on the budget. A budget is very difficult because I mean, I'm always asked, you know, how much do I spend on marketing, which is a kind of a, a long as a piece of string type question. Um, you can spend any amount of money on marketing. It's about spending it effectively and getting a return on it, which is which is important. So, where do you start? You start by researching your market. Um, Market research is broken into secondary and primary. The secondary is done first, which seems counterintuitive. The secondary research is researching information that already exists. So, um, you know, CSO figures, how big is your market? How many people live in Galway to bring into the basics? If you're targeting the 18 to 24 year old, year old group, how many of them are in the city? Um, you know, a lot of tourism, Borfoge have a lot of good information out every year. They release new, new reports about tourism figures, what people are doing when they're getting here, where they're spending the money, what they're spending it on. All this information is out there, um, which is, is vital for a business, and most of it's available free and can be found online. Now, there is the likes of Intel and people like that who do reports and will charge you money for it. Depending on what type of business you're starting up, uh, if you get signed up as a HPSU or a high potential startup with Enterprise Ireland, they'll provide you access to this information that normally you'd have to pay for. So, there's a lot of information out there that you can get your hands on uh, relatively easily and usually quite cheaply. Um, if that information isn't available for your specific market, then you need to do primary research, which is your questionnaires, focus studies, actually going and talking to people. Uh, a good example of that is uh, a project myself and Julian, our project manager at the back, who've been working on for the last couple of years, uh, it's a savvy pay, it's an internet payment method. Uh, it's a new method, basically, you uh, buy your DVD, instead of click it easy, click savvy pay, and print you a barcode, you send that to your phone, and they scan it from the shop, and then you just pay in the shop. Um, and we need to find out if people use this, how often will they use it, etc. There's a lot of information out there on credit card usage, on um, other payment methods, on you know, visa uh, penetration in the market. The gap in the information we needed was there wasn't any information on students on how they were paying. Were they using their own credit cards? Did they have credit cards? Were they borrowing cards? Were they using alternative methods? So we were able to find all the information, um, secondary information we needed. And then the primary information, we did a series of questionnaires in NYG, GMIT, and Global IT to find out where people were spending, or how people were spending their money more specifically. Um, so this research gave us a, a full picture of who our target market were. We knew people who were you know, 45 plus had a credit card and didn't have any security concerns, whereas people 18 to 24 didn't have a credit card and were buying. So that was our market. How do we target them? So we're looking at buying them as students and people with, with their credit cards. So that's an example of using the research to find out who your market is. So what does this market research bring out? We look at uh, competitor analysis. So who are your competitors? Who's in the market already? Uh, what are they doing? You know, how are they marketing to their customers? Uh, market analysis, you know, who is your market? Distribution strategy, how are you going to get your product to your customers? Are you going retailing it? Are you going selling it online? Um, you know, is it a physical product that has to be distributed? How are you going to get a shelf space? Um, I mean, working with, with, with companies, for example, who are supplying into Tesco, or, or trying to supply into Tesco. I mean, distribution strategy, people are going to say, oh, I'll just I'll put it in the shop. It's very difficult to get your product distributed. Um, customer analysis, you know, what are your customers' buying habits? How do they buy it? Where do they buy it? Do they buy it online? Um, there, there's, Obviously, the whole online thing is huge, and getting bigger. But the reality is, I read a great report the other day that 90% um, of products in the US are researched online. So 90% of people who buy something go online and research it. But 70% of people still buy it in a shop. So that 30% is the, the internet market. So people are, are really pushing towards the internet to sell online, which is, which is vital. But don't forget that people still go to the shops, which is what I'm finding about people that they're, they're, they're kind of forgetting the fact that there's a real world outside the internet. Market size, uh, you know, how big is your market is a vital question and people just don't ask it. They just assume that people want to buy this product and there's loads of people want to buy it. 
and then you look at it in detail and you kind of go, you know, this city isn't big enough to support your business. You need to be in a bigger population zone or if you need to have a, a different product or service. Uh, a SWOT analysis is a very useful analysis. It stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Strengths and weaknesses are internal to your business. What are your strengths? And you need to be honest with this because you're not fooling any people but yourself. Um, uh, and I find people do pull the cover over their own eyes when you get them to do a SWOT analysis and you know, they, they put items on it as strengths which are absolutely ridiculous. Uh, but they're internal and you need to build on your strengths and defend against your weaknesses. Uh, you know, staffing. Are your staff good quality? Are they friendly with the customers? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Uh, if they're not, they need to be trained. Uh, if they are, you need to promote that. Um, and uh, the opportunities and threats are external to your business. So, you know, is your if you're in the tourism trade, you know, tourism has dipped recently and it's growing again now. But I mean, that was a big threat to tourism. The fact that just tourism itself was was declining. Uh, opportunities, you know, new technology coming out, the whole world of apps, so maybe 12 year olds in Cork becoming millionaires because they're designing apps that are number one sellers. Um, industry is changing all the time. And PEST then is a political, economic, social, and technological, which is another type of uh, uh, external uh, 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 analysis. Um, a good example for strengths and weaknesses is actually Michael here in the front row uh, in classic marquees. Uh, 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 in Clare Galway, um, we did research for his customer base um, last year. There's some work from Michael of promoting his uh, marquee services and he's targeting uh, people having wedding receptions and uh, sell direct marquees for 21st and parties. So we went back and had a, sent out a questionnaire to his customer base. We got 100 email addresses sent a questionnaire, and 100% uh, of people said they would recommend a service to a friend. Uh, I think 100% gave it. 10 out of 10 in terms of customer service. And something I came back very strongly was that people were very impressed that he returned a call the same day. And that's something that we've done for our own marketing, for micro-marketing, was one of the strongest things that came across, that we return a call when we get a call. And it's amazing how easy that is to do and how many companies don't do it. So with, with classic marquees, you know, those were three really strong points. So that became kind of a core of the marketing. Those results were front and center on his website. This is what the, the general public customers think. Um, and those kind of testimonials are really reassuring to the customer, to, to, to a potential customer. You'll often see on a, a website, you know, this service is Grace, Mary, from Alana. That's too vague. You need to have the specifics, and especially if you're B2B and you're targeting business consumers, that it's Ray Walsh from Carlton for Supplies specifically said this. You know, and, and even better, you can put an email address on it so that person can contact and uh, confirm uh, the recommendation. So all the information you got from your market research and your adverse analysis uh, can then be used for marketing plans, uh, product service launches, geographic and expansion, market segmentation, and promotional strategy. And all of these together are targeting your market. You know, where are you, are you a Galway based business? Are you going to expand? Do you have restaurants? Do you have a second one? Do you have franchises? How are you going to do it? How are you going to target your market with that? Uh, market segmentation. Uh, it's very important that you know, in, in terms of targeting, because if you don't segment your market and you're doing a shotgun blast of advertising trying to target everybody, you're getting people who aren't interested in your product or service. And there's no point, you're wasting your money. So you need to know who your market segment is and how you target them. So that's true, what media do they use? And the media can be print media, it can be radio, it can be online, and uh, television, whatever. And then of course the budget comes in, how much you need uh, so the targeting the market. So the promotional strategy is really the, the front end of targeting. So advertising plans, direct marketing, exhibition planning, PR, branding, web strategy. Advertising plans, uh, I find that, that, that people in Galway, uh, and not just in Galway, but, but people uh, want to be kind of dramatic with their advertising, where it's not necessarily effective. And by that I mean, we will frequently get people in who want to do a full page in the advertiser or a full page in this. But that's their entire budget. You know, one shot like that, I would guarantee will get you nothing. You know, people have to see, it's estimated people have to see an advertisement eight times before they remember it. And up to 12 times before they remember when it's actually four. So I'd always say to people, if you want to get that much budget, take eight small 
as eight weeks in a row rather than a full page, you would get more benefit of it. But people think because it's a full page, but it's flick, it's gone. You know? uh, targeting your market effectively as well uh, in terms of your advertising plan. We had a company in Galway a couple of years ago. Uh, the MDs was a big fan of business and finance, and he wanted to do a campaign in business and finance. Now, they went into detail, his customer base worked business and finance readers, full stop. But he insisted, and he spent a quarter of his budget and a series of ads in business and finance, which brought in zero business, absolutely nothing. But it reflected his ego, and he was happy. But you know, a quarter of his budget went out the window, basically, you know, because he didn't actually plan his advertising. Uh, direct marketing is your, you know, can be flyers with the door, it can be addressed uh, marketing to people, it can be direct online via email. Uh, it, 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 direct marketing has a very, very low response rate, as most people know, uh, but it is very, very cheap to do as well. So in general, you will find that uh, you will get a return on direct marketing. Now, flyers with the door, you all know you get to keep in them, but it kind of depends. I mean, you know, anyone's like, any, any menus that come in my door, I keep them. Anything to do with Woody's or McDonald's or McDonald's DIY, my girlfriend always keeps them. Anything else goes to the bin. You will find that people, you know, select things that, that, that are of interest to them. Uh, uh, it, also, if it's addressed, it can be better, and then if it's online, I mean, it's very different cost. Uh, exhibition planning for, for uh, B2B customers. We've done a lot of exhibitions ourselves over the last couple of years for my own companies from various clients. And in the B2B industry, um, uh, it can be a very good way of both networking and nothing else and being potential contract, contacts. PR, um, a lot of people see it as, as, kind of, as, as free publicity, but you know, we, uh, there's a lot of time involved in actually developing PR and trying to get it in, into print. Uh, branding, the whole image of your company is part of the marketing strategy and targeting your customer. The, the, the brand that you have, that you're offering to people, has to reflect your business and reflect your customers. And then your web, web strategy as well, which is your website, your Facebook, your LinkedIn, etc. etc. The important thing is that what we get a lot now is people that want to do one of these things. Your market, whoever they are, do not just do one thing. They're, they're everywhere. And to get an effective marketing <coughs> plan, you need to integrate your marketing so that you've got an ad in the advertiser, you have a brochure about it to customers, which all refer to your website. Your website has the core information about your business. Um, if there's a radio ad, it refers to the website or your Facebook page or something to, to get people to get more information or to, to, to inspire them to follow up your business more. So the important element is that you're not just doing one thing. I, mean, I always get people saying to me, you know, there's 1.5 million people in Ireland with a Facebook page. Well, that means there's 2.5 people that don't have a Facebook page. You know, where are your customers? Who are they? Uh, an example of that is for chronic guilty by pulling. We started working with them in September. And they've been in the UK for quite a few years, but they weren't really doing much in terms of marketing. So we looked at where they were available. Geographically, they're only in London and the South East. They had limited distribution. They're in Hudgens, which is similar to uh, Super Value in the UK. Uh, they're not in Tesco's or Morrison's or any of those. They're in a number of independent um, butchers and retailers in the same area. So we have a geographic region. We know the distribution points. Um, uh, who are your markets? It's a really famous brand over here, and it's unbelievably popular. Uh, I mean, Claire Toomey, who's there in D, mentioned it the other day. They got two or three emails this week just from random people saying, I really love your product, which was a surprise to me. She was like, why are you surprised? They get emails like that every week. So people love the product so much, they just, for no reason, email the company to say how much they love it. That does not happen, <laughs> that does not happen very often. <coughs> So you have, you have a really strong product in Ireland, but it's virtually unknown outside of the country. But you've got a large Irish population in London. So the strategy is, we have geographic region, we know our distribution, we know our market, we've got what we, we call the expats and the new pants. Expats being people who will be there for more than five to ten years, uh, who went before the current crisis. And then new pants who are younger, probably gone there, not willingly, we shall be saying, to find work. What's the different media for these people? Older people who are there 10, 20, 30 years are the people who read the likes of the Irish Voice and the Irish News and those kind of Irish based English, uh, sorry, English based Irish papers. So you promotion there, but the new people are people who read Facebook 
uh, and who are checking the news online via the Irish Times or the Irish Independent or the Examiner or something like that. So that's where kind of our targeting came from. We know where market are, we know where they are, and we have two distinct elements of media. Now also we're doing in-store tastings and we're doing exhibitions like A Taste of London and stuff like that. So it's kind of a, a broad appeal, all referring back to our Facebook page, all referring to the website. Uh, when we started in September, they had 120 UK-based people who were fans of Facebook through a PR campaign and a Facebook campaign that got up to 950 something at the moment. They're people UK based who we can now target directly with promotions and offers and news that it's available here in the um, UK. So the web strategy, which is the last part there, uh, social media marketing. Again, if you're B2, B2C, if you're targeting customers, then Facebook is very important. B2B, I don't think it's that strong. Um, LinkedIn is much better for, for actual targeting business customers. Uh, there's so many out there, there's LinkedIn, and there's Zing, and there's whatever, I can't remember the names of uh, them. I found that I was, I was just spending so much time updating all of these different places <coughs> and not getting much out of it. What I decided to do was focus on just one site, which was uh, LinkedIn, and one group within that, which is the Golden Entrepreneurs Group, which probably not really the world in. It's got uh, seven or eight hundred members. We're all holidays, we're all entrepreneurs. That's a good market for me in terms of marketing and business planning. So that's what I focus on. So I'm spending all my time in terms of my social media just doing that. And it's over the years, it's I'm sorry, over the years, over the last twelve months, it has really started to take effect. Uh, and I'm using much less of my time doing it than I was before when I was getting nothing by shop running instead of rifling. Uh, search engine optimization is a, a moving target all the time. Uh, until recently, it was very much a, a technician's job for how the website was built. Now it's moving more into the marketing field because um, Google are looking more at the kind of creativity of your content uh, and also how you interact with the rest of the web. So if you have, you know, articles, you know, for example, if I was to write a marketing article and get it published on other websites with a link to me, they value that much more uh, strongly than if I just had a link from goi.net, which is a free directory. So there's certain the value of content much more. Uh, there used to be all sorts of tricks and you know repeating words and having words in white on a white background so the viewer couldn't see it, but the spiders picked up on those kind of things are getting blacklisted now. So I mean, it's, it's, it's becoming much more of a content-driven um, industry SEO. Link building, backlinks into your website are very important. Links from other sites to yours. Um, again, the value of that website is being more um, scrutinized, we'd say, by the likes of Google. But it used to be just any link, but you could get free links just signing up in places. But if you, again, have a link someplace that, you know, you do an article for a Bowie advertiser, that's a big website. Uh, if you get something in the Irish Times, you're, you're going on. Pay-per-click is the likes of your um, ads on Facebook and ads on uh, uh, LinkedIn, etc. You actually pay on Google when you pay. They can have value. Um, again, for Clonic Hilti, we did two campaigns over a four month period. Uh, spent a total of 800 euros. But that got us from 150 to 950 people who like us, who now we can target them directly with information. And then content management is important. A lot of people put websites and it never changes. The more often you change your website, the higher it runs. So you need to keep your news page updated, new customers, um, new services, whatever. Uh, keep it updated uh, as often as you can. So targeting your market requires knowing who they are, knowing where they are, knowing what media they use, presenting your business to them, and uh, integrating your market. So, thank you. Any questions? You just you talked about finding out what media your customers or your target market use. Um, how, how, how do you do that? Usually the media will, will be able to tell you that in any, any print newspaper will have its, um, its uh, distribution uh, confirmed by an independent body and they'll be able to tell you. Now you'll always see that so many of our customers are ABC1, that's what most people target. But you, um, most people target those randomly because they're people that seem to have money as opposed to like seeing who are our actual customers. 
So you will generally, if you, you go to any media, they will have a breakdown. You know, you talked about the, the new pants, as you call them, in London, yeah. that are, you know, they're reading the, the Irish papers online. How do you find out something like that? With Colin Kilty specifically, uh, or be it, do, do a lot of advertising, or oh, sorry, a lot of research for Irish based food, Irish based food companies exporting. So they were able to tell us uh, through focus groups they did how many people were readership some different elements. Uh, plus when you're targeting say for the likes of Facebook uh, uh, for, for Michael's campaign for classic marquees, he was targeting uh, wedding receptions, basically in a band across the middle of the country. So through Facebook we were able to say we wanted uh, uh, women between 18 and 45 that were engaged, that they'd been uh, 65 kilometers of city, 65 kilometers in Adlon, or 65 kilometers in Dublin, which gave us the middle of the band. So that ad only appears to people in that bracket who are the decision makers in the wedding scenario. Uh, but it was also able to tell us exactly how many members of Facebook there were in those categories in that region. So we knew exactly how many people with potential. We couldn't do that. We, I thought I'd be able to do it in the UK, that we could like a big Irish ethnicity. Uh, we couldn't do that, but what we could do was that the ad for chronic illity only appeared to people who were linked to people who were linked to chronic illity. So it would suggest there's some Irish relationship there. So it means that your ad's not appearing in Scandinavia or to random where your product is available. It's, it's very hard to, to who um, uh, you're targeting. And then if you're looking at other areas, you know, if you're targeting B2B, you've got the likes of LinkedIn, or you've got business publications, or you even you know, business section in your, your local papers. Uh, students, you know, student magazines in NUIG, they've got uh, same student independent news. It's a low run, I think it's two or three thousand, but one gets into every house, and you know, the, the, the advertising is cheap. Uh, I think it was 250 euros for a half page, so that's something they did not that. But the response is huge because really, the, the students really cover it. Uh, local press, don't underestimate local press in terms of uh, response. Um, people definitely do read even the very local papers because that's where the local kids are in the football team and etc. 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 So you, you will get a good response from from uh, you know, I mean, they, they have a, a free sheet in Lauren Moore that is printed on a photocopier and stapled together. I would answer that before. <coughs> got a good response out of them. Ali, how important do you think? is this whole idea of using Facebook where you've got all these, somebody likes something and so on. In terms of ranking, marketing, or accessing your market, is Facebook right at the top? Is it a bubble website? Is it, how would you, where would you raise it? Or how would you, how would you, how would you? Um, I, I wouldn't raise it above anything. I, I, was, I don't think anything's above anything else, really. It's, it's about integration. Um, no. Depending on who you're targeting, there'll be peaks and troughs within that. Um, but I, 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 I would certainly wouldn't say to anybody just to do a Facebook campaign or nothing else. And um, that's just not sufficient. The same as I would say to anybody, don't just do a newspaper campaign or don't just do PR. Uh, PR, we have a lot of people in who want to just do a PR campaign because it's free, but you will never successfully launch or run a business just on PR. It's just, it's just not enough PR to a reinforcement of your marketing. Um, and, Facebook is, is similar. I mean, there's a certain amount of the market that's there. Like I said, in Ireland, there's 1.5 million users. But that means, like I said, there's 2.5 million who aren't. So, you know, break it down. And, and, and the you know, trends change in this as well. I mean, it's, only, it's only three years ago, Bebo was the number one website in Ireland. Four years ago, and it's gone. You know, so there's trends in media as well. Uh, I'm not suggesting Facebook will be gone in three years, but I won't be surprised at the same time. So, uh, integration. Sorry, um, Yeah, just, you mentioned there that 90% of research uh, is, do, is done online, and, but yet 70% buy in, in shops. Is that product specific? Let's say if I was buying, if I wanted to buy a sweater, I might like to go to the shop and feel it and, you know, so. Um, it, it, the, the research, the particular article I read didn't break it down by category, mm -hmm. but um, I uh, did a campaign for Gosh Shoes, in Air Square Centre recently, and I was very surprised to find out that clothes are the number three or four selling item online. I would have thought people would want to try stuff on, especially shoes, but uh, yeah, clothing and shoes are number four. Um, people are doing the research to comparing prices, 
really is what they're doing online and you know comparing technology etc uh, I'm involved with a, a golf product the air golf golf uh, so I do some of the, the golf trade shows uh, I was talking to a guy in the UK you know apparently a lot of the UK golf sh shops if you come in and want a recommendation or discuss a variety of golf clubs you have to pay a hundred euro deposit before the salesperson will talk to you because people are coming in and chatting and they're going off my time which is the office yeah. you know yeah. so um, uh, it really is yeah, dependent on the product dependent on the product but yeah. the, 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 the specific information I had wasn't, wasn't broken down by, by industry yeah. interesting yeah. just you mentioned the paper click yeah is that can you limit your, your amount that you spend on it? You can. You can limit it to the overall budget and you can limit it by day. Um, so you can, you know, you can pick 500 euros a month, so much per day. And what it does then is if you were going to spend, it, it, it will tell you, say you're, you're advertising office yes. furniture, uh, you put in what your ad content is and you say, it, it will come back and say, well, if you paid 50 cents for this, you'll be number one on the list. And then you bid 50 cents to go number one, and then somebody else gets notified that they're now number two because you bid 50 cents, so they bid 55. But it'll tell you where you come on the list and it'll break it down. It spreads it over the day as well, so you're not appearing to the first 100 people to go online. They, they'll divide it over the course of 24 hours, so, so you're not appearing over, over the course of time as well. And then you can specifically, you know, it'll just be Galway or just Dublin or all of Ireland or Europe or wherever you want to. Now you can do that on Google or on Facebook. Or and then you get feedback as well that will tell you how many clicks and what time they clicked that and you know and if you're doing say a Facebook campaign it'll tell you how many people clicked the ad and then how many of those people clicked like <coughs> so you can you measure pretty effectively how uh, uh, the exact effect of it is. I'm just sort of trying to understand when you say that the clothes for the third or fourth yeah. Um, is that the amount of money spent on them or the amount of items bought or purchases or how, buy, what I way would, is it? I would the spend. The spend? Yeah. And what's number one? Uh, number one is travel. Travel. Yeah, number two is technology and three I think is gaming. Um, travel got a, a big head start earlier on I think because people were booking flights. Much, much longer before they were buying anything else before booking flights. Mm -hmm. Doing one of these seminars about five years ago, he could have said, who here bought something online? And nobody put their hands up. Kind of about who bought a flight? And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah didn't think about it. Was just buying something online, you know, because yeah. you're, 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 you know, buying a service, you're kind of, you know, expecting to arrive the most. And that made travel agents. <laughs> relatively redundant, mm -hmm. yeah. And um, Ali, when you have a website, how do you, I suppose, translate the people who come in looking on your website and they, they leave again? You know, so how would you track them or maybe give an incentive for them to fill in details so that you, you don't lose people who are just clicking in and out? Well, there's a couple of elements to that. <laughs> One of the main ones in terms of getting people's details mm -hmm. is what's called freemium, giving them something for free. Okay. That, that gets their details. Yeah. In, in my industry, it's generally something like a white paper, a research document. An e-book. An e-book or something like that. It can be you know, anything from you know, your tourism, you can give reviews of an airline or a hotel, or you know, uh, it, you can write something yourself and give it away, it's not going to cost you much, or some sort of a prize. It doesn't necessarily have to be a big prize. Mm -hmm. People tend, tend, tend to click on things if there's anything to give away. Mm -hmm. So, it, Part of it is, is capturing the information that way. Mm -hmm. If you're actually selling to them, it's also making the buying purchase as easy as possible. Uh, you know, for example, when I was doing the research for Gosh Shoes, I looked at Shoe, mm -hmm. and they had tr tried three different designs of websites. Uh, one that had you know, four shoes across, five down, and you know, basically three different combinations of that. Mm -hmm. And then they found that one combination was far more effective than the other two. So that's the one they went with. So it's kind of trial and error there, testing the market. Also, also the, the payment procedure. Um, obviously, the easier it is, the less clicks there is, the more likely um, people will complete a purchase. <coughs> and of course, the content and what you tell them and the design of the website and how attractive it is and all that stuff together kind of keeps them. Yeah. How important is networking is, I mean, in terms of 
marketing. And it's vital, vital in, in, in the B2B industry. Uh, I mean, for, for, for me, it's, for me, it's 50% of my business comes from networking. I have a lot of time in networking, so I mean, it's, not, it's not free because it's, it, there's a big time cost to it. There's a big commitment to time to it. But uh, in, in B2B circles, I think getting in front of people and talking to them is, is uh, still very important. And you know, I've been I'm just back in China and I'm just back in Cologne, and there's a big environmental issue with lots of sort of travel. But you know, I, I think regardless of webcams and all that kind of stuff, you just can't beat meeting somebody in person and talking. Um, thank you very much. I'm sure we all got some nuggets out of that. Um, fabulous talk. You can meet Ollie afterwards and have a, a personal chat room. I know if there's any questions you have yourselves. Or an ideal situation is network among yourselves here. There's a lot of business people here. Have a go at uh, passing business cards around and you never know what business can develop from this. Uh, we're also open to members, uh, new members within the organisation. Uh, special introductory offer of 150 euro um, for this month. Maybe next month, you never know. So we encourage you today to get involved. The sooner you're involved, the sooner you get and we have membership forms in the back. Thank you. Hello? Yeah. <laughs> it's coming in your ear there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like on That's our yeah. teeth. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, so, I encourage you to join what up. What sort of numbers, Ray? Which you talked about, I think, people sitting down together to brainstorm to help each other. Again, as, as, we, as we build, as we build, we will need uh, founding members of eight. Okay. All individual with marketing, we have uh, all different skills amongst. We're looking for new skills to join up. So we'll all be a motivational group together and we'll discuss ideas and... And, and um, as that grows, would you, you, know, you split the group, do you think? Well, it'll, it'll, it'll evolve. Yeah. It'll evolve. The group will evolve. I think part of the idea would be that if people have specific issues that they would like to see discussed, let's say there's a marketing issue, there are a number of marketing people involved, <laughs> let's say there are a number of marketing people involved in the group, if someone has a marketing topic that they'd like to discuss with a number of marketing professionals who are part of the group, and they would come together and have a brainstorming session. Okay. So, but we're open to the way this can evolve. We're, we're, we're all, everybody's involved in this, obviously, from other networking groups. And what they all seem to have was exclusivity for an industry. For, for me being marketing, it's beneficial for me to be a marketing person. But the way we're looking at it is the benefits for the group. So if more marketing people join, we bring more expertise in the same area or in fields within marketing. So it's not about necessarily the individual, it's about group benefit. Okay, we wind up with that? Sorry, yeah. no, it's not really related, but um, the question of how do you think the, the significance of the Volvo race coming to Galway in June, do you know, do you think that that is a great opportunity for businesses in Galway <coughs> or the marketing or, you know, have you any um, direct experience on it? Uh, direct experience and limited. Um, one client of mine um, uh, was a food company, took one of the stalls at the last one and he was very nervous about how much money it was. It was a lot of money for him. I can't remember how much it was, I think it was two and a half thousand or three and a half thousand euros. I think. But uh, he made the money back the first day. You know? oh, so geez. if you're in the food industry, get a stall in there fast. Yeah. Uh, anecdotally, from local business people, I heard that it didn't have much of a kick outside of um, uh, hotels because most people were drinking and eating down around the docks area, which weren't local businesses, most of them. Mm -hmm. um, the off licenses did a great trade. Uh, in terms of the publicity for Ireland, I think uh, it was invaluable in terms of tourism marketing. Um, and this year, we did the the, the final stage as well, but, but um, in terms of yeah. benefit for overall business, I think outside of tourism trade, uh, you know, and that's anecdotal, that's just my... Sure. I'll, I'll just qualify that in terms of the businesses that took stalls, <coughs> yeah, a number of them actually did exceptionally well, uh, a couple of other food businesses that were down there made back their fees in the first day as well. Yeah. Uh, so. We were very lucky with the weather. There wasn't a, there wasn't a bad day at that yeah. time, you know. So, it's like the but it's, I think it's established now. I think there'll be a lot more visitors there because it's the final and because there was such good PR out of Galway the last time. It'll be huge. 
yeah. is huge. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to be massive this year. Is that it? <laughs> <laughs>